Um, so my name is Nick Wingo. Uh, I have I was previously a firefighter for 18 years. I started at a young age. I came into the fire service at 18 years old. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. The only thing I knew is that I wanted to be a hero. Uh, I knew that firefighters were looked up to. I knew that um, you know women wanted to be with firefighters and men wanted to be firefighters. And so it was a job that I saw as this like this job that was this huge pedestal. Um, this amazing honor. It was this great thing, this great job to take on. And it was, it was a good job. It was, I, w I was a hero. There was a lot of good things that I did, but it started to wear on me and it wore on me and wore on me. And the biggest thing, the biggest mistake I had is that instead of um, talking about my issues, talking about the struggles that I had, I would just shove stuff down. I would just as far down as I could. Just dig it deep, give it, dig, dig deep. Because when I came in, the culture, and it's changing, but it's still a lot of the same right now, is that, like, you know, you don't talk about your emotions, you don't cry, you don't do all these things, you just shove it down and you move on because it's just part of the job, it's part of what we do. Um, and if you do do that, it's gonna destroy you. That's what you're told by people. And so that's what I did. And that was the absolute worst wrong thing to do. Um, and it ended in me uh, getting to the point where I was only sleeping two hours a night on average for five years. Um, my testosterone levels were going down. I was having inflammation in my body. So I was starting to uh, get uh, disease. I was starting to have gout and I was starting to have um, asthma problems. And I was having all these issues, all these diseases of inflammation and I didn't understand why. Well, the reason was that I was shoving my emotion down and my body but the response was is to increase inflammation you know i was having all these responses because of my post-traumatic stress and i had no idea um in fact it was so bad i was having nightmares that were keeping me up i was having flashbacks i was having um all these things that i thought only veterans had like i thought that um you know ptsd was was for people um like uh, that, that served in the military because that's just what it was. I didn't know that firefighters could actually have post-traumatic stress. First responders, police officers, uh, all these people that are outside of, of veterans. And I told my partner, I was like, hey, look, I'm having nightmares um, and I can't sleep. And he told my captain and they pulled me offline. Um, and I was mad. I was, I was super mad. I was pissed off. I was mad that they did that to me. I felt betrayed. I felt like um, they took something from me that was mine. I felt like they didn't care about me. I felt all these, all this frustration and anger and um, it was hard, but it's legitimately what saved my life because the next four months of my life were a, a disaster. Um, my dad died. I had to push my father-in-law out of my, out of my life because he was molesting my wife as a child. And um, he was supposed to be in counseling for the rest of his life and he he wasn't and he started treating my mom inappropriately um, on, a, on a vacation and so we cut that relationship out of our lives i almost lost my marriage uh, because of cutting my father-in-law out of our lives so i had all this crap that happened in this short amount of time um and so january of this year i was ready to kill myself like i was done i, I didn't have anything to live for i didn't have a dad anymore i didn't have a father-in-law uh, not that he was there much anyways, but all these, and then my wife was going to leave me um, and, or, or I was going to leave her like one of the, one of the two. And so I had all this stuff and I just, I got to the point where it was either kill myself um, or go get help from somebody that was better than me and smarter than me because I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't, I couldn't break the cycle. I, I was, I was, you know, the sleep was, it got worse. I was like 30 minutes a day of sleep. Um, I was having I was having these like severe anxiety attacks. I was having these outrage um, or outbursts of anger, like at my kids, at my wife. Excuse me. Um, and so I went to treatment in uh, Maryland for 35 days, and that was just the start. Um, and then when I got back, I realized how important it was for me to continually work on my um, mental my mental health and my mental well-being and that it will be a lifelong journey for me. Um, and so that's when I when I was actually in Maryland is when I reached out to Warriors Ascent to just say like, hey, I know that I'm going to need some more help um, because this is not going to be enough for me. Um, and so Warriors Ascent came at a perfect time for me because I had just gotten out of, of treatment 
and so I was able to add some stuff to my um, to my toolbox to help me, and it was just this great opportunity for me at just the performance. So I came into Warriors Ascent, um, like I said, post treatment, thirty five days of treatment, and um, so I was I was really open to whatever uh, people were, were willing to offer me. I was really open to um, tools. I was open to uh, all the things that. Would, would be given to me and so it was I was at this point in my life where it was this great opportunity for me to drill home um, some things that I had already learned and then also add some stuff that I, I didn't really it didn't really click uh, while I was there and so there was lots of stuff that we did in Warriors of Sense that I had done when I was in treatment but there was so much stuff in treatment that you know I wasn't able to get stuff to really click and really to um, get set home and when I came to Warriors of Sand there was you know I mean the biggest like the absolute biggest pieces for me was um, the yoga the meditation um, you know the self-care the journaling um, tapping into my artistic side like here I am this big burly 235 pound man that's tattooed bald head and beard uh, and I'm like drawing stuff and like I'm the typical guy that people look at and they're like, oh, that guy's a meathead. Um, that guy's that that guy's, you know, but that's not who I am. Um, and I'm able to really, uh, really now more than ever, I'm able to really tap into my more tender side. Uh, I'm really able to tap into the loving side of me because I, I was not able to do that. I was tapping into a lot of the anger and frustration and um, all those emotions that were not loving and kind and peaceful. And now, um, post Warriors Ascent, I am able to t tap into my my peaceful side. Uh, what does that look like? That looks like I, I had no freaking clue that this little dude named Carrie was going to come in and and show me yoga and me walk out and be like, man, I'm going to do yoga every day. Um, but now I do. Like I do yoga every like not every day, but most days I do yoga. I stretch. Uh, I'm doing meditations more than I ever have, and I. I'm recognizing how important those things are, um, how much of a difference those things make for me. And so to go to Warriors Ascent and be blessed with um, tools that will legitimately change the way I do things for the rest of my life was huge. Um, and it could not have came at a more opportune time. It could not have came at uh, the most perfect time. And so now moving forward, like I understand that those are the things that I have to do every day. And I did not understand the importance of that until I was in Warriors Ascent. And I gotta tell you, the five days that I spent at Warriors Ascent was impressive. Um, and this is coming from somebody who was in treatment for 35 days. And for Warriors Ascent to do what is done in five days time, um, it's phenomenal. Like there, there is not, I would argue there is probably not many programs out there that can do what Warriors of Sun is doing in the short period of time that they're doing it. Um, it's it's intentional, it's direct, it's well organized, um, and it's it's good. It's good to um, to see. It's good to be a part of. It's you know this is why I'm here um, doing this is because it's something that is a big part of, of who I am now, um, and I want for the organization to succeed and move forward because if it can help so many more people just like me, like the impact that it can have is huge. The amount of lives that can be saved. Um, it's important, you know, it's important that there's more of these things. It's important that we're helping more people because there are so many people that are going without any help. Um, and we like, we need to do something about it. You know, police officers, firefighters, um, veterans, you know, um, you know the, the the prison guards like all these people who are struggling hardcore struggling people don't like they don't even know they don't recognize like when i tell people that it's estimated that three to five hundred firefighters are committing suicide every year they're blown away they have no clue they have no idea like we are just um in the beginning phases of putting light onto post-traumatic stress in um the organizations that are within the u.s like, you know, it's recognized better more and more in the military community with veterans. Um, but man, 
we're just saying being one of the programs that's really recognizing like hey it's not just veterans it's it's these other guys too it's these other guys that are struggling it's huge and it's appreciated like it's um i appreciate it and i know that the people that i went through with appreciate it i was kind of forced into my situation i was for i was pulled offline i didn't have a choice i had to do something retroactively looking back it was five years ago that I started to know um, I started to know something was wrong and so I would tell you if you're not sleeping um, like for reals if you're not sleeping something is wrong quit telling me quit telling people oh it's just part of the it's just part of the job it's just part of, of what we do bull crap it is not normal it is not normal to have nightmares it is not normal to have outbursts and anger it is not normal to, um, you know, get an average sleep. If you're if you're sleeping anywhere, if I would argue that if you're sleeping any five hours or less a night, um, you probably have something going on. Like you probably have issues. If you're waking up multiple times a night, if you're kicking your wife in the bed, if you're yelling and screaming waking up, um, if you're having outbursts of anger at your children, if you're yelling at people when you're driving down the road, like come on, man. That's not normal. Something's going on with you. You really need to stop and self-evaluate because I can tell you what's going to happen. I can show you the path that goes down and it's not good and it sucks. Um, and it, I personally know four people that have committed suicide. And so that's where it's headed. So if you want to be stubborn um, and you don't want to recognize and just accept the fact of where you are, it's likely that you're going to be a statistic and you're going to end up killing yourself. That's just the truth. That's a hard truth. Um, and I got to tell you, like, if you're even if if you know about the program and you know that there's help available, why would you not take the help? Why are you allowing your ego and your pride to prevent you from getting help that you could that could benefit you um, and change your life and extend your career? Because let me tell you right now, like I'm I'm on disability. Like I, I cannot go back now. I can't. Uh, and why? Because I waited too long. I waited too long. And so if you are on the fence, there's no question you should be doing it. If you are, if you're even considering getting help, like you're already to the point where you need it. Um, and set your ego aside because your ego is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to help you. It does not care about you. Um, your ego is what prevents you from doing the things that you need to do. That's just the truth. That's the truth. It's hard truth and it sucks. And it sucks to say like, hey, I'm, I am having problems. Um, it's hard. It's a hard realization. It's a, You know what? If somebody told me I had post-traumatic stress. Um, and the doctor said, hey, you have post-traumatic stress. You know what I said to the doctor? F you. That's bull crap. I don't have post-traumatic stress. Like, that's stupid. Um, but here I am on disability right having this conversation so think about it think hard